end up or something. Um, this is probably going to be like the slightly drier part of the evening. Um, I, I, I'm doing this because this is kind of the sort of talk I want to see more because it's very easy to um, to find out about the latest um, um, stuff that's coming out, the standards and everything. You can read articles. Um, the information that I find hard to get is like how do people who've been doing things for a couple of years um, or how do big teams, um, etc., how do the pros work? And uh, I'm not really a pro, but I figured out that if you speak up with some sort of authority that the real pros will stand up and correct you. So you just start babbling out crap and uh, hopefully somebody will say something smart. Um, um, that being said, these rules are actually um, something I, I'm following, I put in place. I'm trying to impose on other people as well. Um, so yeah, let's go. Uh, as my bio on the website mentioned, I don't really like CSS. I think it's very easy to create chaos. Um, I don't like other people's code and because of that, other people's CSS especially. Uh, also apostrophe, it was really, I, it, it took me like five minutes to figure out whether the apostrophe in peoples was actually necessary or not. I think it's, if, if it's people as in plural, then you would do peoples and then apo apostrophe after S, but anyway, it's difficult. <laughs> so my goals when I do CSS, when I have to, um, is the HTML should be clean. I don't really care much about the CSS. The CSS should be navigable, which apparently is a word. Um, and it should be um, sort of cleaned up. You should be able to find your stuff. But the, really, the readability part, the, the short, the concise part, I want to see that in HTML. Um, also, I think if when it's done right, you're going to write way more HTML than CSS. So that's where the focus should be. And I don't want any side effects. I don't want to change some CSS somewhere and then have side effects somewhere where I don't really, um, uh, where I don't really anticipate them. So we get to that. First one, um, apparently, especially with, say, uh, web components and uh, with, say, Angular directives and components, um, you can very easily just make up your own tag names, and it actually works in most browsers. We don't talk about the browsers that this doesn't work in. Um, for production systems nowadays, you can really just make up your tag names. Um, it looks nice. Um, you might violate some standards. You might want to think about using JavaScript to register it as a custom tag name or something. Um, you have to set a display property unless you want it to be inline. Uh, usually, most elements are want to be block elements. Um, if you can use the um, tag name as, as something that describes your element, you can then use classes as for modifiers. You don't really clutter up like tons of classes in a uh, uh, in your code. Um, this, this should be very obvious to most people. Like, who does not use any sort of CSS precompilers <coughs> nowadays, SAS or less or something? Okay. I, th I think point three is for, I don't know. Um, no, I, uh, that, there, might be, there might be reasons. Um, people might move after. I, I don't know. What do you? Are you? SAS. Yeah, SAS, right. Um, Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, the, the point is there's always like new stuff and um, especially the whole modularization department, there's a lot of, I, I'm pretty sure most of this stuff will be completely outdated in two years. I hope so. There will be better, better uh, things, better concepts. Um, but for me, mostly I like it because I want to do nesting. I want to use variables. Uh, I need that for the rest. Uh, also, by the way, uh, CodePen. CodePen can do uh, SAS or SCSS syntax. You can configure that. Um, if you click on that little um, gear thingy in the CSS window. So do that and you can like produce more concise, shorter code. And um, post CSS, uh, if you feel like it, uh, this, it's, it's kind of a more modular system with plugins, etc. You can do um, auto prefixing, stuff like that. Then, so um, this is about structuring the code base. One top level element per file. 
Um, in, in the case of the, uh, say, product list element that I used as an example earlier, um, the file name will be the name of the tag, tag name, and it should really just be this one top level element and everything else is nested inside. Uh, you can use the ampersand in SAS, which um, I'll show you later for those who don't know. Um, but it should be like one, you shouldn't have any other um, top level elements in that file. Um, and then once you have your list of, file, uh, of files, you can either use some automated way or you just manually put them all in one master file and you compile that and you get your CSS. Um, so this is the example of the ampersand thing. Um, for those who don't know, um, in this case, the, um, the class name here, the light-bg class name, um, the rule it will generate when you compile it, the CSS it will uh, produce is, is basically just together. So you have the content section element with the class dot light, which is not a, uh, a descendant or anything. Um, it's just, you, you can then, the HTML will be content section class light bg. So that's technically in the output, it will generate multiple CSS um, um, rules with like a different top level selector, but um, that's permissible in my arbitrary rules. Um, then I really like pattern libraries because it makes you structure your, your CSS like very strictly. You, you define what elements you wanna have, what modules you wanna have. Um, you can just basically your pattern library can just be one file where every element you use in your front end um, is is in there. Um, maybe with some um, say some containers for different widths, etc. Um, one thing, if you want to take this further, is looking into atomic design, which is this sort of um, front end philosophy: uh, how to break down a, a complex front end into individual elements and and um, uh, turn it into a modular code base, into modular CSS. So this is um, um, an excerpt of my uh, of my pattern library. These are two elements. Uh, you see, I have some as I said, some bells and whistles around it that describe the the thing. So usually, when I design something new or when I uh, create something new, I put it in the um, in the pattern uh, library so I can see it really works by itself this one, like because it's all contained, this is one top level element. Uh, some elements can also contain other elements. In that case, you have to be careful that you don't have any rules in your element that will affect anything that is below your element. Again, I think with, with like uh, web components and all the new fancy stuff that um, is coming and I'm not sure how supported, these things you can you can do like proper encapsulation. Maybe somebody wants to say something about that later. Um, this is the kind of stuff that works with current browsers for sure. Um, this is an example of, of a container element. The only style that is um, applied to the element itself is for the title. So the, the element is called content section. It has a title and it has content. Um, the content is just inside that div. And by using the um, greater than, the what is it called, direct descendant selector, I guess. By using that, that H1 uh, um, style only applies to the to really the title directly below the content section, directly inside the content section um, uh, element, and not inside the div where the actual content goes. So really, there should be in in this case, there should be nothing that affects the look of what goes inside that div. Um, then the C in CSS stands for cascading. You can have multiple rules applying um, to the same element, which I find um, super confusing. You can't really, you, um, you never know when you change some code, you never know what else is, is it going to affect. Uh, where do all the rules come from? It takes a lot of time to like, pick it apart. You spend your time uh, in, in like the CSS inspector, etc. Um, the exception for this rule is um, modifier classes, which can override some properties of, uh, of elements or media queries for responsive stuff. Uh, if you have code that you want to reuse in multiple places, um, either just turn that thing into its own element um, or 
use mixins, um, which are a feature of both uh, less and SAS, I think. Do they call it mixins in less as well? Does anyone care? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is anyone using less? <laughs> okay. Anyone still going to a using less of three diamonds and belt? <laughs> Right, um, this, is, this is probably one of the more controversial ones. Um, I haven't really done my homework on font sizes. I find it easiest, easiest to just use fixed font sizes, pixels, and none of that EM or um, um, relative stuff. Um, some people may disagree. Please do that later after the, um, <laughs> like doing the question <laughs> thing. Correct me on this, please. But um, yeah, it's... <coughs> It's very easy. Again, you don't you don't get anything outside of your top level element um, affecting affecting your looks. Then um, this is some mixing code I use for responsiveness. It looks like this uh, inside the content section as an example. You can you can use mixins with blocks inside. Um, I, I find it reasonably readable in terms of. of code readability. I still find it can get a bit cluttered and everything after a while, but it's still, I, I find it one of the better solutions for, for like media query stuff. Uh, SVG, that's also something that actually I shouldn't have to mention, I hope. Um, use SVG when you can. Uh, it's much smaller. It has no pixelation issues. Um, you can you can manipulate it yourself if you use it in uh, <coughs> um, uh, yeah if you if you know how to how to use it it's just a XML code in the end um, if you use SVG minimize your SVGs there's a tool called SVGO there's a web front end based on it called SVGOMG um, and look at them because like look at them in a text editor look at least at the size because if you get SVG say from some guy exporting stuff from some Adobe things sometimes there's a lot of binary stuff attached to it if they don't really do the whole export for web or whatever it's called well, to interject um, the current version of Illustrator is really really good at doing exports yeah no, I, I think I've seen, I never really Prior touched it off myself. Sketchy, but, but the current one is really good. And yeah. most of that is because um, there's a like crazed uh, SVG enthusiast, Dmitry Baranowski, who's now working for uh, Adobe and wrote it yeah. himself because he got so frustrated with it. Yeah, I think they really like SVG. Um, um, it's, yeah, as I said, <laughs> I have actually recently, I've gotten nicer SVGs generally. Um, I think it's mainly a memory from the past. Um, and uh, if you do that, if you use SVGs, say, as say, background images or whatever, you can easily, with, um, uh, with if in, in your build chain, you can inline those, especially the small ones. Again, once HTTP2 is, is uh, everywhere, this is probably pointless or counterproductive. For now, it's kind of nice to have um, one CSS file that you deliver once and all images are in there. Uh, what else do we have? Right, don't use Bootstrap. Is is there anyone who is a big fan of Bootstrap? <laughs> um, that generally, just don't don't just have include. For that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> don't just include a, a third party stuff without looking at it. Um, if you if you have to use Bootstrap, or if you think I just really need the forms, I don't want to design my own stuff. I just need the Bootstrap forms. Um, there's Bootstrap SAS. You can include just the modules you want. Uh, you can configure it, um, and you can compile it into your into your CSS. Right, and uh, the last one, that's just the one I find the hardest to watch other people do things. Just some very basic knowledge of your text editor. Know how to find a file, for example, um, instead of clicking, yourself, uh, clicking through a file tree, which can be quite tiring. And I think these things affect decisions you make uh, when it comes to, so if you're bad at navigating your files or your project files, it will affect the structure you choose and you will, um, tend towards putting more stuff into one file because you don't like jumping between files because you're bad at jumping between files. Um, or you will have like a flat directory hierarchy because you don't like clicking through directories. But you shouldn't have to because usually every editor you should be able to, to pull up a file by typing like the first three characters or something and, and then select it from a list. Uh, also, uh, good stuff, um, I'm using WebStorm, so if, say, you're on a variable or you're on a mix-in, uh, your cursor, and you want to see where that 
mixin or that variable is defined, command B, you jump there, no matter where it is, in what file. Um, very useful, um, yeah, to navigate your code tree. Do I have anything else? Right, uh, the company I'm working for, I have to say this, I keep it within 15 seconds. The company I'm working for is hiring. If you think you can do a better job than me at this, which is likely, uh, please do it for me, like take the work from me. I want to move on and do other stuff for the same company, but not necessarily the front end stuff anymore because we have a lot of stuff to build in the back end as well. Um, right, questions or corrections or swear words? <laughs> Anyone? Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> who, who wants to? Who wants to? Uh, uh, I think we said bootstrap rather rather quick, but it depends on your target for this in a sense. Because it's like if let's say you really want the website to look very good, then maybe it's better that you want to build your own CSS. <laughs> well, if you don't want to do any CSS, I agree. If you want to yeah. build a website in five minutes, you use Bootstrap, you throw in some HTML, you copy paste it together from the documentation, and you have a website. But if you're doing CSS, um, I think you're just going to get angry at Bootstrap for messing with your stuff. But basically, yeah, uh, my answer is pretty much the same. Um, if you want to actually do something, then you're better off writing your own code from scratch than modifying Bootstrap because it will take you the same amount of time, if not less, and you'll be a whole lot less <coughs> frustrated at the end. Plus, you can control your destiny. Um, Bootstrap has got tons of issues with it. Um, if you want to fix them, then good luck. Um, so you, as soon as you sign on to any kind of platform, back end doesn't really matter because as long as it delivers the HTML, who cares? Front end is really critical. Um, yeah, so, so many reasons not to use Bootstrap. I understand why people do it. I just don't like those people much for their choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, one thing is uh, rather <laughs> say it's actually quick so in the sense that you, you don't really bother about stuff or then, well. Yeah. I think there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of use cases where it makes sense. <laughs> if it's not uh, end user facing, if it's some internal whatever thing back end for your stuff, sure. I mean, it's it's really convenient to, to output decent tables, decent navigation. Um, yeah, as long as it's not um, as it's not customer end user facing, and well, in that case, again, you're not doing CSS. So. Well, I think if, let's say compared to similar terms, like using a camera phone against like we are trying to use a camera in manual mode. When it's like, we are, are we really like snap happy kind of, are we say that we want to control, we want to control the lighting? Uh, yeah, but, the but then again, that's the difference between being a photographer and, and uh, just wanting to take snapshots of your food. And that's fine, that's the thing. But then you're not a photographer. If you use your camera phone, you, you can't go out and say you're a professional photographer and sell your services to, uh, to weddings and stuff like that, right? But it's fine, it has its purpose. I think this is taking too so long. I mean, Otherwise, in summary, it's just, it just like yeah. Well, different purposes. <laughs> For your talk, I will now hand you over the first official CSS conf sticker that I've given out this year. Yay, that thanks. you now have to put on your laptop because you don't <coughs> like CSS. <laughs> I will put it next to the JS conf sticker from last year. Oh, fantastic. That's Good idea. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Size is in pixel dimension you're saving from Illustrator or Sketch or ah. something, or is in byte size yeah, or? In a byte size, because uh, I can show you one side that I've done using the SVG, and I'm facing the rendering issue because of the lot of animation. Okay. So, so you're doing SVG animation? Yeah, I can. This is. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so SVG has performance issues if you do a lot of it. I, I was really talking about that little Facebook share icon and that stuff yep. in that context. If you're getting into stuff like that, then you're obviously running into performance issues. And when you're doing animations and graphics, then it's completely different rules. Um, sometimes things make no sense at all. <coughs> they happen to be quicker, and that's how you just have to do it. So you may be better off using 
WebGL or uh, Canvas or something else like that. Um, but it depends exactly what kind of stuff you're trying to do. There's no simple answer for it. Animation's hard on pretty much every platform. I mean, my this is my hospital. I just want to know whether there is any experience in the SVG now change the application. Or just what will be the good size to use in the way for the user? Like file size again? Yeah, or file size again. Small as possible. <laughs> so, so the ones I include directly into my code are usually very small, a couple hundred bytes to maybe two kilobytes or something. But if you use one, if you use a multiple list? Yeah. Um, I haven't hit any limits where like I had performance issues because it was too um, like, yeah, too many. There are some guides out there for how to simplify your SVGs, um, like cer avoiding certain uh, declarations and how you actually edit them in the first place. That can make a massive difference in terms of byte size <coughs> performance. Um, I would strongly recommend just googling something along those lines, um, optimizing SVG for the web, and not as in post process, but even in the actual editing stage. Um, if, well, like if you've got exactly the same logo that's designed well or badly, um, the byte size can be massively different. And there's, there's usually there's a lot of stuff you can do if you get someone else's work to make it better, like combining paths. Um, bringing different, uh, doing the gradients properly and things like that. Um, so yeah, I strongly recommend you read up on that. It's too much to explain quickly, but there is a lot that you can do. Actually, I think you can get the largest savings from actually working on the actual SVG file itself, because if you are using, like for example, you're converting it from a raster image to a SVG image, programmatically you end up with a lot of unnecessary um, points so I don't know if there is an automated way to clean it up um, for me personally I actually go into uh, Illustrator to do the manual cleanup if anybody has a better method mm, sure sh um, please share it with our friend here but I agree with Chris there are a lot of people who actually do this um, at a very professional level in terms of optimizing SVGs because uh, you will see some sites that do a lot of SVG animations and those SVGs themselves are quite complex but yet the file sizes are reasonable it's because the SVG files themselves have been um, optimized at the illustrator level and not at not when you are actually building the website so i think there's a lot of savings that we actually skip over because we are not the designers we are not the people who actually created the assets so 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 that that's that something you maybe you want to look 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 into and anyway uh segue into the plug for that